Hey guys, it's Avondale, and welcome back to the Noxcrew Game Show server. Uh, I am on our actual recording server right now, and I just wanted to take an opportunity to give you guys sort of an informal tour of the spawn chunk of the Noxcrew Game Show, right? Let's see, spawn. Uh, it's a gigantic mess of command blocks, but most of the stuff that's in here. Uh, actually runs the games that you guys have seen and will continue to see for the rest of the season. Flashback about six months ago, and I was starting to really plan out how we were going to do game show, uh, how to make sure it was all going to work out right. And I realized that we were probably going to need insane amounts of redstone, which we did end up needing. But the important part was that I realized early enough that we needed to make sure we streamlined everything as much as possible to be able to have the server not lag out when we had, you know, 15 to 20 people on for recording nights. So that was sort of the task that I had, and I had this idea that we could sort of make what I've been referring to as the Noxcrew Game Show API in Minecraft. And essentially what that is, um, is you think about the number of things that you need in multiple game show games, right? Like the timer, for example, um, teleporting people to the games we always need, picking a winner, uh, resetting everything after you've played a game to make sure it's all good. Uh, stuff like that needed to be done multiple times, right? Over and over and over again. And what's the sense in building that once per game when you can just build it one time for everything, right? and then be done with it. And so that's kind of the idea behind the AP High and what I'm going to be talking to you guys about for uh, the next couple episodes of uh, this little chat that we're having here. Uh, so in the first one today, I wanted to talk about a thing I called the Master Clock, and then I'm going to go on to talk about the timer as well. So this is the Master Clock up here. Uh, it's this entire floor as well as a couple floors below. Uh, there's one spot where it exists as well, but before we understand what that is, it's important to... Uh, understand that there's two different types of 20 hertz clocks that I use, right? Uh, so this is just your standard 20 hertz clock. Uh, you can always tell that the 20 hertz clock is working because you punch out the block uh, and it keeps going. Uh, so, you know, if I was to put on a block on here that says say hi, it's just going to say hi a bunch of times in chat, right? Uh, now, this clock over here is what's called a sponge clock. It's still a 20 hertz clock, but uh, it does something different. If I break this block, it just stops, right? So I can restart it here uh, with redstone, and you'll notice I put redstone here, but when I break it, it stops. But yeah, if I put the say hi command block in here, it's still pulsing. And so what this is doing is this is actually a fill replace clock, right? Uh, it's filling the area above it with sponge when there's redstone block there, and then doing the same thing, redstone block for sponge. Which means if there's air taken out of it, it's not going to place a block there which is one less action for the game to come out with, which uh, sort of just very slightly reduces the lag, but it also gives me a really easy way to add and remove things into this. And that's what the uh, purpose of the master clock was, right? Uh, you look at this clock right here, this clock controls the game modes, status effects, uh, pretty much everything that happens to any of these player groups, right? Uh, so Nox mode is a carryover from the pilot season when we had the plugin made by uh, Vexite. And if you take a look in here, the current Nox mode gives you uh, resistance and saturation, right? So that's just your basic one. And this whole section of the sponge clock right through here is set up to receive Nox mode stuff. So that's the only thing that can go there. Uh, this is the player's game mode, I believe, right here. Uh, it's just forcing them into game mode. New users in the spawn chunk take the uh, light blue section there. Spectators are controlled by this one. Cam mode gets controlled by that one, etc. And uh, it's actually really easy for me to switch these things around, right? So if, uh, as I try to t broadcast myself. So if we actually look at myself right here, right? Uh, you can see that you see me. I'm in uh, what's called the tech team uh, up there, right? And the tech team... Uh, is controlled over here um, by this pink one because I use pink wool as my grading block. So if I actually want to uh, change what's called my tech mode, I can get into my command book here 
and I can go right over to tech mode. You'll see here game mode one uh, has name tags off with invisibility. That's what I'm in almost all the time uh, when we're on game show, right? So nobody can see me, I can fly around, you can't see my name over my head. And if I ever need to be the lobster ref or they need to see me so I can help explain a game, I go to tech mode two and you can see me again. And uh, there's really similar things around here with uh, pretty much everything else that we do, right? Uh, you have uh, Nox modes and it just lists the different uh, status effects that happen. Now I also trigger these uh, manu manually with command blocks in the game, but I just wanted this backup to be able to adjust the things that I was doing from the book if I needed to. And that helps out a lot with testing. So if you look on the floor over here, uh, you'll see that I have these color coded, right? Uh, so this magenta one is uh, game mode 2 for, I believe, the, uh, it should be the player game mode, right? Yeah, player game mode is magenta. Um, that's the only game mode I ever need them in, so I don't really even know why I have that, but uh, it's important to have nonetheless. Uh, same thing over here with uh, new players joining. Uh, that would change if we ever go back into full build mode again, but we run so many games on here nowadays that it's not even worth it. Spectators always need to be in game mode 3. If they ever need to not be in game mode 3, I just take them off that team. Uh, you can see right here in the lime green, this is for cameras going back and forth. And so basically when I change these, you know, it'll play that message in chat. So if I change the cam mode over, uh, it's a cam mode 2, it'll place a redstone block there. You might have just seen it. Uh, it'll say cam mode 2 to me in chat and it'll show me the, mas the message was from the master clock down here. Uh, and then it's going to carry out those actions and basically all it's doing is just cloning this section right here uh, Into the right spot over there So I put the cameras back in cam mode one and the nice thing about running all these effects on the clock is uh, When you actually uh, Have them set up like this if a player disconnects and then reconnects to the server Everything's still gonna be the same uh, <laughs> That's very important because we have disconnects all the time in game show and uh, that clock is uh, what takes care of it. Now, uh, interestingly, I didn't have this uh, clock the entire time. This clock was actually uh, made necessary by a bug that we had in a game that we haven't aired yet, so I won't talk about it until I do the Behind the Walls episode for that video. But basically, I used to have the, a really messy version of that clock down like right here, and they, it controlled all your game modes and stuff, but uh, it was sort of overriding. Uh, some stuff on the other games and that was when I decided I had to streamline it make it look like this so ever since I did that uh, this has been sort of the go-to way to do any status effects game modes or anything it's just based on the uh, different modes that I can put you in through the master clock so yeah you've learned a little bit about the master clock now I also want to talk about the timer today and I have the timer sitting right here now this was one of those things that was really important to get right because when the timer runs it's going to run for the entire course of the game right so you just have the same thing happening over and over and over and over again and uh if that lags at all or if it messes up or if it has a variance there's just a lot of bad things that happen uh so i wanted one that was consistent i tested five or six different timers before i just decided to use the simple one right like uh I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that off and just run the timer here for a little bit. It's a uh, alternating clock that's on a five tick loop, so it pulses once a second, right? 10 ticks is a second. It goes on in five ticks and then back off in five ticks. Uh, and then it stops itself again with that block. So literally anytime I need to uh, use the timer, uh, I go through a series of steps and I actually have all these steps in the commands form in a text document so I can just copy and paste them into command blocks. But essentially what I'm going to do here, right, uh, is the initialization of the scoreboard. I'll kind of show it to you by putting the uh, scoreboards up on the side here. You can see here I have the timer. It's been running for a while, right? Uh, so there's going to be, for the first thing I'll need to do is set the time to a certain uh, time and just give me a second to do that real quick. Okay, so I have that set up here in these two command blocks. I just pulled them in from my text document. And basically what you're going to see here is that my uh, timer runs around to this armor stand over there, as you may guess, called time. Uh, so to set the time, I set the armor stand right here. You'll see whose name is time. Uh, I set their score in timer minutes. So basically that's my behind the scenes objective. 
uh, to total minutes. So let's say I wanted the total minutes to be five minutes, right? Uh, do the same thing with timer sec, which is remaining time in seconds. We'll put zero, right? So now when I trigger these, uh, nothing happens on the timer. And the reason for that is because you'll notice there's fake players under timer, right? There's minutes and seconds. Uh, so what I actually have to do is after I do that, I have to apply it to the actual fake scoreboard uh, players. And that gets happened after every iteration of the clock as well. So I'm just going to use these command blocks here. And you'll notice that it says timer five minutes, uh, zero seconds, just like we thought. Uh, so now let's uh, take a look at uh, what happens when we start this going, right? So now it's counting up. Uh, why is it doing that? Uh, we wanted it to count down, right? Uh, well, here's the reason. Uh, so this command block right here is what actually adds the seconds to it. And you'll see it says play, uh, scoreboard players add name uh, equals time, armor stand, whatever. But then it goes score timer mode min equals one. So there's actually a timer mode objective as well. And what that timer mode is going to do is choose whether it's adding uh, one to timer seconds like it is here or subtracting right here. You'll see it's scoreboard players remove on this one uh, So what that means is that when I set the timer mode to negative one the timer is going to count down So if I come over here and I look in this command block I can actually toggle this right and you'll see now on the right hand side of your screen the scoreboard's counting down now it's counting up and Down again, and it just does that immediately. and It's really nice. So now actually if I uh, go ahead and just set this back to zero here for the timer uh, we can show a little bit more of what's gonna happen right uh, so this next command block here is an interesting one and uh, it works in kind of a neat way right like I needed an output uh, when the timer ended up uh, finishing itself basically and so I'm gonna pause this timer real quick and get the, uh, the output set up all right, so I actually had the timer output command block right here, so I just put it on this block to show you uh, that when the timer runs out here in a second, bing, we're going to get our output. Uh, you'll notice the timer stopped at zero, and I got a redstone block here. Basically, I needed a way to be able to give the timer finishing uh, something to do, but I needed it to happen specifically where I wanted it to on the map. If I had it happen over here in the spawn chunk, it would do me no good because it's not always the same thing that it has to stop for every time uh, if that made any sense uh, so yeah that basically I'm able to put this armor stand over here uh, whose name is uh, timer result uh, I just put him where I need an output from the timer and then it bings down a block there and triggers whatever I need to have happen and then you'll see this here is just sort of the conversion I use to get from uh, minutes to seconds up and down uh, it's pretty much basic timer logic that uh, everyone does with their timers and then these blocks at the end right here I already sort of showed you but they just apply using the operation command uh, they take the value in timer sec and timer min to uh, put it on the minutes and seconds fake players in the timer and uh, yeah, this timer has literally been used for every game that has been timed on the game show. Uh, so, you know, you take a look back at it and you think about games like, uh, well, I'm trying to say games that uh, have already happened so I don't spoil anything for you, but uh, Pyramid is a good example. We did the countdown timer on the right with that, Block Skip All as well, uh, Mayan Hunt and Outlawed uh, both use the same timer. Uh, it's just nice to have one really consistent way to do that. Alright, so I've told you a little bit about our timer that times our games, and the master clock which chooses what game mode and status effects happen to our players. I hope you've enjoyed that insight into sort of how the spawn chunk uh, works and how things came to be on the game show Redstone, and I hope you'll join me next time when I talk about my scoreboard system over there and also the kit system that we're still implementing. Uh, so until next time, I've been Avondale, thanks for watching.